Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome back to episode number 29 of the Washington football team franchise here on Madden NFL 22. Today I'm bringing you, yes, another year one recap, you could say part two, because in the last live comp I forgot a couple of things I wanted to go over from the year one recap, so I thought I'd just bring them to you guys today. So if you're excited for this one, make sure you drop a like and subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. Now, before I go any farther in this episode, I do want to mention that the all-season live stream will be this Saturday at 2.30 p.m. So be on the lookout Eastern Standard Time. I'll post another tweet as well as something in my community tab to let you guys know. But the off-season live stream will be this Saturday. So I look forward to seeing you guys there as we turn the Washington football team into the Toronto Thunderbirds. Now, I want to go over two things that I forgot in the part one yearly recap. Uh, and the first one is our record and our schedule. Now we went 10 and seven, you can see that in the bottom of the screen. We know we lost in the divisional round to the Seattle Seahawks who ended up losing in the Super Bowl to the Chiefs as we saw last episode. But I kinda wanna go over our schedule. Usually I go through game by game and I forgot to do that. So let's take a look at our yearly schedule to see how this year unfolded. Uh, we start off the year with a loss to the Chargers, 38 to 31. The Chargers came back from behind and beat us in that game. And then we won a Thursday night battle against our division rivals, the Giants, 24 to 21 in a ugly affair in which Fitzpatrick threw five interceptions. We still came away with the victory. Then we beat the Bills, who were one of the best teams favored preseason in the AFC, but they started off 0-3. We beat them 30 to 24, and then we went on a three-game losing streak. Lost to the Falcons 33 to 19, lost to the Saints 30 to 27, and then lost to the Chiefs, who destroyed us 43 to 31. At this point, you're sitting two and four, and we rebounded nicely against a Packers squad that struggled this year, going, winning 37 to 31. And then we had a very solid, I would say, first defensive looking game against the Broncos, 30 to 20. We actually played pretty good against the Broncos. So we went into the bye week with a record of four and four. And then coming out of the bye week, we beat the Buccaneers in a thriller in overtime, 40 to 34, to improve to five and four on the season. But then we lost to the Panthers in Ron Rivera's return to Carolina, 30 to 17. And then we lost on Monday night in a defensive select fest, 17 to 12, to the Seahawks. So at this point, we had dropped to five and six in our playoffs. We're looking rather thin, but this is where the Washington football team ended up turning their season around. We beat the Raiders pretty solidly, 37 to 22. They had some garbage time points, otherwise Carr did not have a good game. That got us to 500, and then we got one game above 500 where we beat the Cowboys 28 to 17. That's where Gibson ran for 330 yards, broke the NFL record for more rushing yards in the game. However, on our high, we came back and went on a low. I did call this a trap game when it was coming up and it lived up to just that we lost the eagles 29 to 26 that dropped our record to seven and seven and if we wanted to make the playoffs we kind of needed to win out and that's exactly what we did we beat the cowboys again 24 to 12 and then got a revenge against the eagles 30 to 23 and then in a winner take all matchup in week 18 we beat the giants 27 to 16 so we lost we ended up finishing the season winning five of our last six that got us to 10 and seven and then we know how the postseason went beat down the Buccaneers, and they got beat down by the Seahawks. So that's the main thing I wanted to touch on that I forgot in the recap. The second one I wanted to go over was a coaching carousel of sorts. Now, unfortunately, at the beginning of this series, I wanted to do a 32-team control franchise, and so I took over all the teams. However, I didn't really leave up to live up to that. So I realized that, that was just a ton of work, didn't have time for it, so I just decided to focus on Washington, but when I took over those 32 teams, I set like the coach goals for every team where like your wins and stuff like that, not knowing the side effects. I knew it said the higher you shot, the more like you were to be fired, but I didn't think teams would actually like fire you. So I had like the Ravens set like theirs for the Super Bowl. And since they didn't make the Super Bowl, they fired like a uh, hardball. Same thing with the Bucks. I set the Bucks for the Super Bowl. They fired Bruce Arians. And so I decided to go back and I was like, that's kind of dumb. So I went back and went through every single team and kind of reassigned their coach. So Arians is still the coach of the Bucks, uh, Harbaugh still the coach of the Ravens. But the teams that I did think needed a change, I went ahead and made a change for those teams. So I kind of made my own coaching carousel. So I was going to go through it real quick. Uh, I want to start off obviously with us to start. We actually have a new coach. I mentioned this in the year one recap. We have Sean McBay as our head coach. Now, the reason why is probably thinking, why did we fire Ron Rivera? 
Well, Ron Rivera actually wasn't fired. With the team moving to Toronto, Ron Rivera just thought it was best for him and his family as, you know, he didn't want to make the trip up to Canada. Remember, Ron Rivera um, was, he survived a battle with cancer and, you know, he wasn't sure if he wanted to travel to a new country and coach a football team. So, you know, I obviously, you know, Drake Graham and company thought that that was very, you know, a reasonable decision. They decided to honor Ron Rivera's wish. So after two years, Ron Rivera is no longer the head coach of Washington. You know, no hard feelings. I wish the best for Ron Rivera. And you'll see what happens to Ron Rivera in just a second. But our new head coach is Sean McVay, the former head coach of the Los Angeles Rams, who were actually the worst team in the league this past year. They went 3-14, and 14, so that's a little scary. Um, he did coach them for five years, went 46-35, and 35, ended up taking them to a Super Bowl, if you remember they lost to the Patriots. And he does have some history with Washington. He was the offensive coordinator in Washington from 2011 to 2016 when Jay Gruden was the head coach. So with Sean McVay available, I, you know, we went ahead and hired him, and he is our new coach for Washington. As far as the other coaching carousels around the league, uh, I'll show you everybody who changed, starting off with the Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos have a new head coach. They fired Vic Fangio, and they hired Brian Callahan to be their head coach. After three years, Vic Fangio was fired. He went 19-30 and 30 in that span with no playoff appearances. And in comes Brian Callahan. Brian Callahan, for the past three years, has been the offensive coordinator for the Cincinnati Bengals. Been part of the reason why Joe Burrow went and won Comeback Player of the Year award this year. He's put together a dynamic offense out there in Cincinnati. And Denver decided to give him a shot. He did work for the Broncos back from 2010 to 2015 as an offensive assistant. So with familiarity, John Elway went out and hired Brian Callahan to be the head coach in Denver. And they have a whole new system. They kept their defensive coordinator, but they also brought in a new offensive coordinator, Eric Studesville who was formerly of the Miami Dolphins, has some familiarity in Denver. So Broncos got themselves a new head coach. Next up is the Jacksonville Jaguars. After one year, they have fired Urban Meyer with all the controversy surrounding him. And in comes for Jacksonville, Byron Leftwich. Now, after one year of finishing 5-12, and 12, Urban Meyer got the boot. And in comes a man who used to play for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Byron Leftwich drafted in 2003 by the Jaguars, spent three years as their quarterback. Uh, didn't really do a lot for them at quarterback, but he's made a name for himself as one of the youngest and brightest young offensive coordinators in the league. He spent the past two years as the offensive coordinator in Tampa Bay under Bruce Arians. Worked with Tom Brady, obviously got them to that Super Bowl, and the Jaguars obviously you know, went out and he knew Leftwich was going to be a hot commodity this year, and he comes to the Jaguars to be their head coach. Now the other team, the next team that made a change to the Panthers, they fired Matt Rule. And the Panthers' new head coach is Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera returns to Carolina. After two years, Matt Rule was fired. A lot of upheaval in Charlotte wanting hashtag fire Matt Rule. I still want that, by the way. And they bring in a familiar face in Ron Rivera, who was the Panthers' head coach from 2011 to 2019. David Tepper and Rivera have made men's, and he is back in Charlotte. Remember, he led the Panthers to Super Bowl in Super Bowl 50, obviously lost out. But the former two-time NFL Coach of the Year is back in Carolina. I would actually love to see that one day. I love Ron Rivera. Next up is the Patriots. Bill Belichick retired at the end of the season, and their new head coach is Josh McDaniels. Now, this isn't a huge switch for the Patriots. Obviously, losing Bill Belichick, who was their head coach for 22 years, is going to be different. He went 259-94 in 94 in that 22-year span. That is incredible. One of the best coaches of all time. But in comes Josh McDaniels, who's been the offensive coordinator for the Patriots for the past few years. Remember, the Patriots did go 15-2 last year. They had the best record in the league. So I understand the Patriots not wanting to switch it up too much. Josh McDaniels has been the offensive coordinator. Nothing really new out there in Patriots territory. This is his second stint, though, as a head coach. Remember, he was the Broncos head coach from 2009 to 2010 for two years. But Josh McDaniels, after spurring Indianapolis a couple years ago, finally gets his job as the New England Patriots head coach. Next up, we have the Las Vegas Raiders, who, you know, they had a probably the most wild season in the NFL. You know, John Gruden got fired halfway through. Gus Bradley had to step up, almost got the Raiders uh, to the postseason. You know, Arnett and Ruggs being cut. They're 
two of their former first round picks because of off the field concerns. So it's been a hectic year in Las Vegas. So they decided to just start over again. Gus Bradley, who did a good job, was not retained. And they bring in Don Martindale, the former defensive coordinator of the Baltimore Ravens. Now this past year, the Ravens had the best defense in the National Football League. He has been there for four years, and he gets his first shot at being an NFL head coach in Las Vegas. Now, he was with the Raiders back when they were in Oakland from 2004 to 2008 as their linebackers coach. So, the Raiders go back to Don Martindale, hoping that he can establish a defensive powerhouse in Las Vegas. And then lastly, the last head coaching change is of the Rams. We know Sean McVay is out. He got fired. And in comes Scott Turner, who was our offensive coordinator this past year. Scott Turner has been with us for the past two years, and we had a very dynamic and awesome offense this year. Ryan Fitzpatrick led the way with Terry McLaurin, Samuel, and Gibson putting up you know record season. That drew the attention of the Rams, and they have made Scott Turner as their head coach so obviously we had to go get a new offensive coordinator but we'll touch on that later but scott turner a former he is actually from los angeles california so that's part of the reason why he took the job with the rams wanted to go back home and now he has the luxury of building them back up from a 3 and 14 season there's obviously still pieces out there they got ramsey donald stafford as their quarterback if he continues to play but remember, they don't have a first-round pick, so Scott Turner does have his work cut out for him. But best of luck to him in Los Angeles. But that'll do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoy the little coaching carousel. Let me know what you guys thought down below. If you guys enjoyed that, I'll do that for future seasons. I'll take over the coaching changes myself and just make this a more immersive franchise. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, I'll see you guys on Saturday in the off-season live stream. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.